the state of Papa John's, the pizza, pizza giant, going through a series of leadership changes since the company's founder stepped down as CEO two years ago. Joining me right now in an exclusive interview is the founder himself, Papa John's founder and former CEO, John Schnatter. Great to see you, John. Thanks very much for joining us. Uh, good morning, Maria. Thank you. You stepped down. You were forced to step down. The company that you built and that you founded Tell us first what happened. Well, it's not forced to step down. Uh, we had a succession plan in place, so we executed that plan, and uh, I was ready to retire. We had a, we had a fantastic nine-year run. Uh, we took the stock from about 640 a share at almost uh, 88 bucks. And so good run, good fun, good time. We were ready to go. Uh, you, so in other words, what you're saying is you, you enriched a lot of people by, by uh, creating <laughs> this business, uh, making a profitable business, and then, uh, and, and then making the stock go up. Uh, causing causing a, a very good situation for a lot of people involved. You were ready to retire, but you had a problem, obviously. Uh, you were on a conference call, and a racial slur was used. Can you tell us what was behind all of that? Well, if you look at the chronological order of events, is the NFL call was November the 1st, and there was, it was a benign call. There was nothing racial about that. Uh, they turned a little bit into kneeling, but there was nothing said about kneeling. The call you're referring to was uh, July the th uh, May the 22nd that aired the July the 12th, yes. Okay, so let's go back to the first, the NFL call. Tell, tell me about the NFL and, and your relationship with the NFL and Commissioner Roger Goodell. Right, very good. Uh, Papa John's was the most associated brand with the NFL, uh, most recognizable brand with the NFL. Uh, about a third of our budget was spent on the NFL, and uh, they were having the issue with the kneeling. And uh, I, I kind of got on Goodell a little bit. Let's fix the problem here. Uh, you know, let's let's satisfy the players and the owners. But there was nothing in there about the players uh, kneeling or anything that was um, any way racial. Mm -hmm. So what was what was most upsetting about that call? Um, the the way it was misconstrued. Um, the comments were benign. Um, and the way it was twisted, and then the company's lack of effort to correct the record. That was probably the most frustrating thing. So you're saying you would have liked Roger Goodell to, 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 to come to your defense? Um, I would have liked Roger Goodell just to fix the problem. Remember, a third of our budget was the NFL. So when that, the ratings, I think, were down some 20%. So it was hurting our business. It was hurting our franchisees. It was hurting our small business owners. Do you think he was behind forcing you to give up the chairman's title? I don't know if he was behind it. I think he was a little bit... Um, frustrated with my comments. Um, he's not used to being challenged. <laughs> and the NFL is very powerful. And I was, I was pretty stern. You need to fix the problem here. You're the leader. Be accountable. Then what happened? Uh, I retired um, end of uh, 17. And um, we, we started to deteriorate a little bit with the performance. And then uh, as I was coming back in the picture, we had a uh, diversity training session uh, in New York with laundry service. Um, and long and short of it is they taped the call, which is fine. You, you know, I get taped all the time, but I wish they would have told me who's on the call and they were taping it. And um, that got twisted. So on that call, you, you, you were talking about somebody else and you made a comment that was a racial slur. No, there, there's never been any racial slurs. There's been in, never been any use of the word. That's probably been the most frustrating. That's not true at all. Um, what the call was 52 minutes, and it was totally anti-racist. At the very end of the call, I simply stated what, what another founder said and, and the way he went about using that word. Colonel Sanders calls black people the N-word. I would never call a black person the N-word. It's not the way I was raised. You were but, saying what Colonel Sanders said. Yes. Paraphrasing. Now, Colonel Sanders' family, as you know, has come out and said, he's a weasel, he's a liar. He, you know, Colonel Sanders would never speak like that. He never said that. I don't know what John Schnatter is talking about. I haven't heard that. Yeah, the family came out and said that it's not true. That Colonel Sanders did not use That's that kind right. of language? Yes. Colonel Sanders' family <laughs> no, said that. I don't want to debate the yeah. Colonel. No, no, God I know. I'm soul. just saying. But you <laughs> repeated something that you saying Colonel Sanders said. It was common knowledge that Colonel Sanders talked like that, but let's don't talk about the Colonel. <laughs> okay, okay, so let me ask you this. Can you give us a sense of the culture as you know it at Papa John's at that time? Was it 
commonplace for people to throw around words like that? Was it, did you feel that it was no big deal that you were repeating something that somebody else said? Tell me about the culture and whether or not these kind, this kinds of language was mm -hmm. acceptable at the time. Oh, Papa John's was voted the best place to work in Kentucky five years in a row. I would not tolerate that for one second. Um, the board members have been uh, on the board for an average of 10 years. The management tenure was 20, 25 years. So no way that conduct would have been uh, permissible. No way. So what happened after that call, after you repeated something that you had heard or you knew Colonel Sanders had said and you were referring to him when you said the word? Um, first thing I found out is they taped it. And then laundry service was let go. So they were bitter, and um, they attempted to extort money. Uh, otherwise, they were going to hurt the company and hurt me. In what way? Um, the owner of Washman, uh, Casey Washman, who owns the laundry service, basically said, if you don't pay me a, a millions of dollars, I'm going to bury the founder. So that's when I went, oh, my gosh, we got a problem. <laughs> okay. So then what happened? When did you first realize that this was going viral, this was going to be a public situation? Uh, the reporter at Forbes, uh, Nor Noah Kish, or Kirsch, excuse me, uh, he wrote an article on the 11th uh, that went viral on July the 12th. Yeah. And this is the inside story of Papa John's toxic culture? The Forbes story, was that a second story? That was a second story. Okay. So the first story was just specifically about that phone call. What he had heard about the phone call. Noah at the time didn't have the tape, but I believe a laundry service or somebody else uh, miscommunicated and mischaracterized what was on the tape and Noah ran with it. So what do you want people to know about you knowing that they have the story, that you use this word? Uh, this language, even if you were talking about someone else saying it, what do you want the public to understand about you? Well, to put it in context, the most unfathomable, uh, unbelievable thing about this, this whole situation is that the old board and the old executive team under Ritchie used the black community, used race, and the media, Forbes, to steal the company and thus destroy the company or hurt the company very badly. In, in what way? How? Well, stock was 88, went down to 40. Um, Very quickly. Um, 88 and the 16, 40 as of um, two months ago, it's up to 50. So Jeff Smith and the new uh, board have got the stock up. Wall Street's fine, 40 bucks to 50 bucks, good momentum. What concerns me is Main Street. Our business is not healthy right now, so that needs to be rectified rather quickly. Okay, I want to talk to you about that and, and what you're going to do to, to try to fix the situation. Your life was completely changed after this. You make this remark on a phone call, your life changes, correct? No. My, my the wife public, really but, but the, there's so many stories about you in this phone call. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying the perception, what people <clears throat> were talking about, what's important to them. No, I don't like any of this, and it's it's not true. It's a farce. Uh, but in the 14 months this has been going on, I've never had a negative comment in public. Now, what I'm worried about is my employees and my franchisees, uh, the small business owners that really wake up every day and make Papa John's great. Those are the people that keep me up at night. They're losing their jobs. They're scared they're going to lose their jobs, and the franchisees are in, in trouble.